If you've ever seen any Osu gameplay from me, you might notice that my keypad looks a little... strange. This keypad started off as an extra mechanical switch fretboard for an explorer I had lying around. At the time, I played on a membrane keyboard, and I just couldn't be bothered to do any research or pay money for a real keypad. So of course, I did what any sane person would do. I hot glued the keypad to a foam block, I slapped an Arduino onto it, I then 3D printed a housing, and voila! An unironically good keypad that I still use for serious gameplay. But, I hear you ask, this video is called the world's worst Osu keypad. Despite the level of jank, my keypad still holds up in quality. What's up with that? This, though, this is only due to the keypad using quality mechanical switches made from actual, legitimate manufacturer. What if instead, I made my own switches? This is where the true jank starts. These are the riskable void switches, and unfortunately, my keycaps had just fallen off. These are 3D printed switches that use magnets and Hall effect sensors in order to tell when a switch is depressed. I printed over a dozen of these switches, most of which failed either in printing or when I assembled them due to the terrible tolerancing and friction in the switches. Even my friend's custom-built, absurdly fast 3D printer failed on its first attempt to print these switches. At the end of the day, I had a graveyard of failures, but I did have two survivors. I reattached the keycaps after they fell off, and finally, I had completed the world's worst Osu keypad. It's hard to overstate how unbelievably terrible these keycaps feel to play on. Playing on it feels as if the keypad is fighting back against me. The breadboard that I mounted the switches to constantly wobbles back and forth, and the switches themselves are ungodly stiff and feel as if they will get stuck at any moment. The terrible tolerancing in them also means that the stems of the switches will wobble around in completely unpredictable ways. Surprisingly, the most reliable part of these switches is in the use of the Hall effect sensors, which have never failed to detect the magnet when the switches were pressed. But of course, all of those measures are purely subjective, so let's try and get a more concrete metric on just how terrible this keypad is. In order to get a good comparison of my skill on this monstrosity versus on my considerably less jank main keypad, Let's look at the two live plays side by side. I have over 50 replays on this map of my uncompleted story, so any major differences in skill would likely exclusively be explained by the hardware differences. It's extremely clear to see that I dropped many more 100s and misses in my play with the world's worst gamepad, and skipping to the end, the results screen has it plain as day. How terrible my performance was on that keypad compared to just my regular playstyle. In fact, that was my worst score on that map. It was even worse than my first pass of the map. This keypad just sucks. Okay, maybe I am being a little harsh on the keypad. After all, I did manage to FC one map using it during my play session, and with respectable accuracy as well. Of course, this map was a 40 second long farm map, and there weren't any bursts longer than three notes. But an FC is an FC, right? Well, I'll just let the reaction from me in the past explain that. As long as you don't need to hit any streams, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad if you don't need to hit any streams. It's still shit, but it's not bad. So, is this truly the world's worst OSU keypad? Absolutely. If we define a keypad as an input device that specifically uses keyboard switches, this means that using other weird controllers to play OSU wouldn't count. And given that the switches used on my keypad were 3D printed on the piece of garbage known as an Ultimaker printer, I don't see any way that anything could possibly be worse.